Um, thank you very much. Uh, hello, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ban, for uh, the, the intro. Um, well, uh, my name is uh, like Momodu, and I'm a DevOps infrastructure engineer at uh, CloudKite. And uh, at CloudKite, we basically help um, like organizations transform into cloud native um, uh, infrastructure, where we basically test stories from legacy migrations and, of course, uh, optimizations of uh, different environments. Um, I'm also um, a cassava farmer. I run um, a little farm where I farm cassava. Uh, for most of us, I don't know what cassava is. Cassava is a um, very opinionated <laughs> word. It's one of the most popular um, food, like food source in, in, in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. And, um, yeah, if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me on Twitter, and of course, um, active on LinkedIn as well. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about Terraform in uh, CI/CD pipelines. But before I start, um, I'll give you like a backstory of uh, how like this topic has basically evolved. So initially, I, I wanted to do a demo uh, with either GitHub Action, Flux CD, or GitLab, but then. I took a look at uh, other topics and I noticed that most people, like most, some of the topics are also going to talk about CI CDs. And I decided to go the, the, the uncommon way, which is to talk about security standards, pipelines, and of course, agnostic standards. And for most of us that have experience with Terraform, we know that Terraform is like a very strong, sorry, opinionated uh, tool where you, if you if if you if, if if you come across two different companies that are using the same Terraform strategy, then there is a high probability that there was non, non less sharing between the engineers in that team, or um, an engineer changed switch uh, companies and then implemented the former practices in the new uh, company. So um, straight to the objectives. Um, intro which I've already done, and then I'm going to start with uh, common practices, which. Um, previous speakers have already done justice too, so I'm just going to add fun to it and then talk about it. And of course, I'm going to talk about uh, code management, where we'll get to talk about monorepo versus polyrepo, poly or multi-repo. And then we're going to talk about, we're going to have a decision diagram where I walk you through different considerations that you have to consider when you want to implement uh, CI CDs for your Terraform uh, IEC code. And then, um, if there is time, we'll get to talk about different workflows, like different Git workflows generally. So um, I believe I've done uh, the intro. So let's move straight to um, common practices. Um, common practices. Uh, first one would be the use of remote states. Um, a little backstory again. I, I had um, an engineer that was working on Dummy one time, and he mistakenly uh, deleted um, our backend file for uh, Terraform. And like, of course, he, he created a pull request and then the CICD was running and then the environment were creating themselves like from scratch and then it, it kind of freaked out because um, like the state file, remote state file is very important whenever you're talking about uh, automation and basically working cross team and using CICD. So first thing you have to do when you want to like talk about CICD pipelines is using the state file. And uh, from there, we'll move to uh, the use of a dry method. Dry method is a, do not repeat yourself. Um, the, the key benefits of um, Terraform is basically having like your infrastructure as code in one place, having a single source of truth generally for your infrastructure, and um, always making sure that there is uniformity within the environment. And trust me, it becomes complex if you write your Terraform code and then you have to like write uh, resource blocks for each and every resource that you create. And then at the end of the day, if you want to make changes for um, like different environments, you'll have to start opening different files and then opening different files and then making changes. And it ends up in having like this, uh, having like configuration drift between this environment. So it's advisable that you always adopt the do not repeat method 
and to, to adopt do not repeat do not repeat yourself method you basically you can use modules uh which is like the most popular and then of course the use of a tier bars whereby you have different tier bars for different environments and then if you want to change anything in any environment it should be in a tier bars and not like having to create a resources for a new resource block for that particular um uh, resource and of course, uh, the previous speaker talked about using tags. Tags are very important. They cannot be overemphasized, especially if you work in, like if you have a good monitoring set in place to monitor your infrastructure. And basically like, it helps you like track down your infrastructure easily and to monitor and have your basic SLOs and SLIs for your infrastructure. And um, of course, the most important one that I always, I always tell people that I get opportunity to talk to is don't build for yourself. Um, Terraform is like a very interesting uh, tool to work with, especially if you if you start understanding the data structures, the maps, the any, the maps of maps, and what have you. And it gets really tempting that there's 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 a there's a thin line between uh, building infrastructure for yourself and building for the team. Like there are some infrastructure that if I want to build infrastructure for myself, it's going to take somebody that, that is also familiar with Terraform. So it's probably going to take that person a few days to totally understand what I'm building. So I, so if you're building Terraform, if you're building your infrastructure, you should always consider your team members, like everybody in the team and of course developers themselves, because um, not everybody is as skillful as you. And of course, um, the on a light note part, it, it is not successful until you apply it. Uh, this is <laughs> um, like very common and it can be annoying sometimes, but then it is it is what it is. Yeah? So um, that's all for the common practices. And if you have uh, common practices as well that you do over at your uh, company, you can add it to the comment section so that others can also get familiar with them. And uh, yeah, moving to um, code uh, management. So as far as uh, CI/CD, uh, CI/CD pipelines are concerned, like the way you structure your CI/CD pipelines is highly dependent on how like you manage your code. So of course there is the monorepo approach where you basically have like all your infrastructure in the same repository. But not all the time. There are scenarios where you have like specific infrastructure, like you have your IAM or EPCs in a different repository and then all other infrastructure is in one repository. So that is more or less like uh, a monorepo approach. And then um, there is a multi-repo or polyrepo approach whereby you have um, dedicated repositories for a certain group of specific resources. And this is mostly common in a distributed team where we have um, we want to implement like the shift left methodology or of course uh, self-provisioning whereby uh, the, the infrastructure engineer does not have to get involved in any provisioning of tools whereby like developers are also familiar with Terraform. So everybody is responsible for their, for their resources generally. And yeah, so you might be wondering why like I'm boring you with uh, <laughs> code management basics. I mean, it's, 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 it's common, right? But like, What's like the, the, the basically the permission you give because Terraform for Terraform to be able to provision resources in your CSP like cloud provider uh, environments, you need to afford like you need to give it uh, permission. And the permission you give to Terraform is highly dependent on your code management strategy. And um, like in most cases, if you're using a monorepo, you give Terraform escalated privileges, for instance, if if you have a monorepo where you are, you are creating identity access management, and then you are creating like servers, and then you are creating VPCs, and of course, basically, and of course, databases, you are basically going to give more or less admin access to that Terraform, um, um, to, to Terraform, and then Terraform can be able to do and undo. Now, imagine Terraform being able to create user, Terraform being able to change users, Terraform being able to generate keys and, and what have you. So that is like a basic overview of the kind of power you get to Terraform in the monorepo. And of course, in the multi-repo approach, you tend to break down, you tend to break down uh, the permission to list privileges. For instance, if you have um, a, a repository that is dedicated to 
uh, databases. You give it like you give Terraform only the permission required to create or uh, to update databases. And then if you have one for S3 buckets, you just dedicate you just dedicate a least privileged permission to it. And like, basically, everything is like that in, in multi repo approach. So um, I like. I like, I like to give like most times I like to talk about I like to give images, image representations of uh, the power that Terraform has in either um, uh, monorepo or polyrepo. And first one is I'm sure most of us are familiar with this face, um, Okai. <laughs> so 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 basically, like I was saying, uh, Okai like as a security like, family, um, are basically basically nothing without uh, my arrows. Which is like the permissions, and of course we have um, again, again, Scarlet Witch. Um, another opinion of mine: Scarlet Witch is the strongest Avengers. I mean, <laughs> um, so basically in a mono repo, where you have uh, escalated uh, privileges. Um, sorry, hold on. Okay, in a mono repo where you have escalated privileges you have uh, the Scarlet Witch who can do and undo. So basically, an attacker can easily get access to your uh, tariff. Basically, anybody that can write, that can create a pull request in your tariff repository can get everything that is needed to like, attack you. For instance, um, you can write a Terraform script to extract uh, output from different resources for databases and what have you. And before you know it, somebody has attacked you from a database to get your passwords. And of course, the person can even delete your resources. So that is what Scarlet Witch can do to your resources if you are using a mono repo. Or of course, for Scarlet Witch to have access to your uh, secrets and everything, you have to give it access. So basically, uh, that is uh, the picture representation that I always use for uh, this uh, different uh, code management approaches. So um, when should you use um, code management, like the different code management? Well, it depends because you cannot, like because of uh, one or two reasons, just move to uh, multi-repo or monorepo. So we have to, like I said, give you, you write code for your team and not necessarily for yourself. So first thing first is if you if you have a single team ownership, like you have a dedicated infrastructure team for your resources and they are always available. You can use a mono repo for your infrastructure. And of course, if it's a distributed team whereby um, we have different teams responsible for their own resources, of course, multi repo comes in place. And then if you want a single source of truth for all your infrastructure as code, um, mono repo is there. And of course, like if you want granular access and what have you, you can use a multi repo. And basically, like this is like a monorepo example, and um, it's like um, basically, like basically, like you have your Terraform code, and then this is AWS. Uh, so for those that, that are not familiar with AWS, this is AWS, and the way like this structure works is that like, there's a control account, like the AWS organization, and then there are other resources in other environments, like uh, we have your dev environment, you have your product environment, you have your stage environment. But this is this folder is dedicated to the control account, which can also be called the master account, where you call, where you provision uh, instances like um, like the org, the you create the 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 account, the identity access management, the cloud trail. And of course, other security measures and other things that you want to put in place. And then there is a folder dedicated for databases. Uh, and of course, the shared uh, resources like VPC, um, identity access management for it, uh, the different environments. And of course, uh, EKS, for instance, Kubernetes service, uh, ECS, and of course, EC2s and RAM53 and what have you. So this is basically like one of the. <laughs> Sample of a of, of a mono repo because, like like I said, Terraform is a lot like it's highly opinionated. So um, there are different approaches that you can use to run your mono repo. In fact, there are countless approaches. But this is what uh, works. This is what works for me. And of course, it does not necessarily mean that it works for everybody. Like I said, if it does not work for most of my team members, then we'll have to look for a way out. So. Way to fix it, and of course, to 
the next question, which is, do you really need uh, a CI/CD pipeline for your Terraform? Well, this is more like an anti-pattern to the topic <laughs> because well, I'm talking about uh, CI/CD pipeline for Terraform. I'm asking you, do you really need a CI/CD pipeline for Terraform? And I'll be honest with you, not in all cases. Like you don't need CI/CD plot, uh, CI/CD pipeline for your Terraform if you are a very small team. Like for instance. Um, well, the decision, the decision tree, we are going to talk more about this, but like, like a simple answer for it is that you don't need CICD uh, pipeline for your Terraform. You don't always need it for your Terraform. And of course, this is uh, my decision tree and um, I'm going to walk, uh, walk, walk you through it to like, arrive my decision basically. So, so you've got Terraform, yes, and uh, you want to use CICD. If no, then you can apply locally. And basically, if you are, you, are, you, are, you are a small startup and you are not scaling yet, and you just want to provision basic resources, maybe you want to uh, start with um, like an MVP for your, for your product, you most likely don't need uh, all the hazards of CI CD. So all you have to do is basically apply your resources manually. Of course, you can apply your resources manually while still using the remote state. So this is more or less like for a small team. And of course, if you want to use CI CD uh, uh, pipeline, is it a mono repo? If it's no, which is like a multi uh, repo, no brings you down to, back to uh, the multi repo approach. You are allowed to use your CI CD uh, pipeline irrespective of the CI CD platform that you're using. So, basically, like I told you, it's like the attacker or anybody is like an okay, so you have limited, uh, least privileged resources. That if there is any leakage in the nearest future, uh, which has not happened to me, but of course, in secret, security wise, you also have to consider. Uh, worst case scenarios. So um, if there are like explo exploitation of your CI/CD platform generally or secret exposure, you know that the attack surface is not on the high side. And of course, if you are using a mono repo, then there are a few questions that you have to ask yourself. Is it self-hosted self Git? If it's not self-hosted Git, for instance, um, at CloudKite, we advise like we strongly advise against using like um, not hosted, like having your CI CD platform for Terraform on uh, uh, platforms that are not hosted by yourself because of how, um, how like, um, should I say, how dangerous it can be if your secret gets exposed. For instance, um, if you have your GitHub action set up and you have your mono repo for instance, and then you have admin privileges to the mono repo. What if uh, GitHub gets asked? That means everything about your resources can be pulled down like at, in the, at, 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 by the snap of a finger. Basically, uh, Scarlet Switch can just grab your infrastructure and just pull it down. And of course, you can do it, but then of course, just know that there is risk involved. And of course, if you have your self-hosted Git, then like, use of CICD, CICD pipeline for like, for instance, uh, I've worked on a project where uh, we had our own self-hosted uh, GitLab and everything, secret management, everything was done the GitLab way and of course it was not exposed to the public. So secrets were more uh, safe in that kind of environment. And of course, uh, CICD pipelines run for Terraform. But if it's like, a platform like GitHub Action, where you have like an admin secret access key in the public uh, domain, it is very risky and can be like very like dangerous to like the organization as a well. whole. So, but if you still want to go go with it, if you still want to set up your CI/CD platform for CI/CD pipeline for say, uh, let, me, let me just use GitHub Action since I've, <laughs> I've been using GitHub Action for. A very long time. <laughs> so um, you can make use of like you can, you can make use of the GitHub action and accept the risks that are involved with uh, like possible hacking and of course um, dangers of um, exploitation of your infrastructure. Or you can use external tools. 
and uh, so external tools like Terraform Cloud, uh, there is Atlantis, and then we have the NO, and a couple of other tools. Um, these tools were, were built with um, like um, the, the vulnerability of having your, your, your keys in like Terraform generally, in the uh, CI, uh, CI CD pipelines generally. So talk about Atlantis, for instance. For Atlantis, you self-host your Atlantis in your own environment. You supply the keys and everything is secured. So you now connect Atlantis to your GitHub, uh, GitHub actions. And for every pull request, Atlantis run your Terraform plan and then does what it does best and what have you. So in that way, your uh, plan is secured. Same thing with Terraform Cloud. You basically have your, well, Terraform Cloud is not like self-hosted, but then you can also, uh, like, more, is, is more secured compared to uh, GitHub Action. And of course, the ultimate one is if you still have to go through this decision document and you don't necessarily have like any need to automate your Terraform, uh, you can still apply locally. There are a lot of um, benefits that comes with applying locally because it generally reduces the attack surfaces of um, like the permission goes to Terraform. And of course, it also, um, gives you like limited uh, access to the resources generally. And of course, I still have a few minutes more, which we would like to talk about a few cases. Like, um, so one of the I had to have to deal with in the um, exploitation has to do with um, um, basically um, Terraform state, right? It's Terraform state is where you store everything about your infrastructure. And if uh, somebody that has access to your repository is able to write the Terraform code right, to add the Terraform code, especially if you are if you if you if you if your workflow involves the use of uh, PROs, whereby plan runs for um, for every PRO that you that you, that you pull, and then of course um, um, like basically if you put your code there, you can basically run an output that generates like everything that you need to attack a, an organization from knowing the, the keys, which of course Terraform has solved partially with the secret uh, feature. And of course, also assessing other different resources. And of course, you can also delete resources just by pulling out uh, outputs and of course, doing what <laughs> an attacker would do. I'm not, I'm not a security, I'm not a hacker, but then I'm quite familiar with uh, Stuff like that, and um, with that, with this decision tree, I hope I've been able to like um, preach you on like basic considerations that you have to put into that you have to consider if you want to adapt, uh, use the CI/CD pipelines for your Terraform. And um, if there are no questions, uh, I expect questions, and if there are no questions, uh, this is like uh, the end of my uh, presentation. Time will not allow me to go more, uh, go in details about other workflows. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, this is uh, all I have for you. So if there are any questions. <laughs>